Hello, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for neuropathy. First of all, what exactly is neuropathy? Well, it results when nerve cells, which are called neurons, are damaged or destroyed. This then disrupts the way that the neurons communicate with each other and with the individual's brain. So there are three types. It can either affect one nerve, which is mononeuropathy. An example of that would be the median nerve and carpal tunnel syndrome. Another would be a combination of nerves in a limited area or many peripheral nerves throughout the body, which is called polyneuropathy. So symptoms um, are commonly described as sensations of numbness, tingling like a pins and needles sensation, and oftentimes weakness in the area of the body that's affected. Other types of sensations may include a sharp lightning-like pain, burning, throbbing, or stabbing pain. None of these are pleasant. So what are the risk factors for neuropathy? Well, 60 to 70% of those with diabetes will end up developing neuropathy. Alcohol use can lead to the problem. Chemotherapy, 30 to 40% of those who undergo chemo experience neuropathy. Repetitive motion disorders, uh, such as with carpal tunnel. HIV, 30% of those due to the treatments develop um, neuropathy. Autoimmune disease are particularly high risk, such as rheumatoid, Sjogren's, lupus. Uh, post-trauma. Various infections can lead to neuropathy. Shingles, which is also the uh, virus for chickenpox, HIV, Epstein-Barr, hepatitis C, Lyme disease, post-radiation, as well as a slew of inherited disorders, three of which would be Fabry disease, Charcot-Marie Tooth, and amyloidosis. So a few statistics on neuropathy. It's estimated that diabetic and peripheral neuropathy will affect 23 to 30 percent of the population. 70% of those with diabetics suffer from neuropathy, and only 30% of those who have neuropathy achieve relief with traditional treatment options. Well, what are those traditional treatment options? Well, first of all, you got to think about what is leading to the neuropathy, the lifestyle issues such as changing one's diet, increasing exercise, other lifestyle things such as stopping smoking, and then medications, antidepressants, uh, in these cases, are not used for depression. They're used for helping modulate the pain. Seizure meds are, once again, not used for seizures. They're also used for modulating the pain, such as with gabapentin, which is also called Neurontin. Pain medications, either nonsteroidals or narcotics. Topicals, like either creams or pain patches. Physical therapy, maybe a TENS unit. Spinal cord stimulator is an actual... Uh, pretty good last resort option. It doesn't fix anything, but 80% of patients do achieve relief, and it can bring back uh, in half some sensation that's been lost. And then surgery if it's indicated. All right, stem cell therapy for neuropathy represents a completely new paradigm of non-operative treatment that can actually repair and regenerate some of the damaged tissue. It uh, is great at providing relief and improved function. It's extremely low risk, outpatient, and effective. Our protocol involves a combination of IV therapy and focal injections, and I'll explain why here in just a moment. All right, so how do the stem cell biologics work? Well, a lot of people think that if they get a stem cell procedure, either IV or with focal injections, that those stem cells in the biologic are then going to turn into the specialty cells in your body and do the repair and the regeneration. And that's typically not how it works, all right? Uh, the first way that we see them working is through paracrine signaling, and that's basically when you have cell-to-cell -cell communication with recruitment of one's own body cells as well as new blood flow uh, generation and reduced death of the cells such as neurons that we need in our body. The neovascularization I put in bold because it's really, really important, especially with neuropathy. Neuropathy is typically a microvascular problem where the very small blood vessels are dying off and you start to get death of neurons uh, as a subsequent phenomenon, which neurons need blood flow. Blood flow brings oxygen and nutrients, and if you don't have that, death ensues with those neurons. So in this way... Um, when you get these focal injections with the procedure, it can enhance new blood flow to help save 
those neurons from dying. Immunomodulation can be very important for those with autoimmune diseases and other issues where you're basically stopping the body from attacking itself. There's also some direct mechanisms as well. So let's start moving into some papers. Here is a study in mice. Anti-inflammatory mesenchymal stem cells reduce symptoms of painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Well, what you may be sitting there saying is, well, how do you know if mice have reduced pain? And here's what they did. They induced diabetes in mice. Then they treated them with stem cell therapy. And what they found is there was a greater modification of the inflammatory state and vast improvement of symptoms, which then argued for the continued investigation. So basically, they were able to use these mice, look at their um, inflammatory markers to see that they went down tremendously, um, and then the symptoms of diabetes, you know, it's not worth going into those here, but they dramatically got better. So this was an article uh, out of China where they really just looked at the science behind what's happening. Mesenchymal stem cells to treat uh, diabetic neuropathy. So on the left side, what you see are the problems is with diabetic neuropathy, you often get high blood sugars, uh, high fat, low oxygenation, low blood flow, which vascular insufficiency, you know, the diabetes part, and then so on and so forth, high inflammation. Whereas on the right, when somebody has the stem cell therapy, what you end up with is better nerve conduction, increased capillary density, so better blood flow, better density of nerve fibers, and less pain. So you do um, get amelioration of the diabetic neuropathy. So this is a study, 2018, Stem Cell Therapy for Diabetic Foot Ulcers, a review of preclinical and clinical research out of Yale University. So they looked at 58 studies, and they showed that overall, stem cell therapy is an effective treatment for diabetic foot ulcers, and it's currently used as an alternative to amputation uh, in those who don't have other options. You know, I don't know that it should be used in those who don't have other options because it's so safe and it's very effective at increasing blood flow to those who just have impaired due to diabetes. We've seen this time and time again in many papers where patients get healing where otherwise with traditional methods they just don't. So application of stem cell derived neuronal cells to evaluate neurotoxic chemotherapy. So I, I mentioned earlier that chemo patients have a 30 to 40 percent chance of developing neuropathy. So this was a lab study where they looked at um, various chemotherapy agents and was there protection with stem cells and they showed yes um, that stem cells protected nerves from the side effects of chemotherapy drugs. So that can be very helpful uh, for a potential side effect. Yeah, you get your cancer helped, but at the same time you develop a whole new problem which it looks like can be prevented and or repaired. So in conclusion, I mean, I could go through about 10 or 20 more studies, but many, many small studies, early clinical trials, our own experience in hundreds of patients shows that stem cell therapy for neuropathy is not only safe, but it's typically very, very effective. You know, time and time again, we've spoken with patients months after the treatment where let's say they have diabetic neuropathy, they get an IV therapy, plus they also get injections into each of the legs, which helps to increase uh, blood flow and helps increase that microvascular uh, <clears throat> flow, which is uh, really affected in neuropathy. And you see these patients who have, you know, basically purple type legs who come back to pink over months, you know, is it guaranteed? No, but it's very, very safe. Um, now, what, what we do know is that it appears that high stem cell numbers are necessary. And that will lead me into the next slide showing you our international program and why it's so cost effective. The combo is what we've seen work the best, IV and injections. One of the reasons is that the IV can help modulate ones, let's say they have a diabetes problem, it can modulate blood sugars nicely, it can help with other inflammatory issues, and the injections can help a ton with protection of neurons as well as increased blood flow. Umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells give fantastic results. Uh, just like you see in autologous studies, without the need for donation. And, and, you know, if you give your own bone marrow, for instance, you're going to have to either stay there for a few weeks to get them cultured or come back. Ours, you don't have to do that. Uh, one more thing about the uh, type of stem cells. Embryonic stem cell therapy and induced pluripotent stem cell therapy are not ready for prime time. 
If someone mentions to you that you should get one of these, embryonic or induced pluripotent, just run away because they're not ready, they're significant problems. What is ready and what we use and been using for years is mesenchymal stem cells or hematopoietic stem cells. Those are the way to go. Both of those are in the umbilical cord tissue and they work really, really well. So let's talk about the international program that we have. Uh, we have locations in Tijuana as well as Mexicali. Uh, Cancun is coming on board uh, in about six months, so look, look out for that. You know, Tijuana is only 20 minutes from the San Diego airport. It's very, very close. It's convenient. It's in a great part of Tijuana, the business district. Uh, the process starts with a free phone consultation with our licensed, experienced stem cell doctors. We do have a patient concierge representative that will be dedicated to your case that will help with all travel logistics, including travel from the airport to the clinic and back. That's actually provided, um, and they'll go with you to the treatments as well. I do want to mention the cells um, with our program because a lot of the magic happens at the lab, all right? Gen Cells, the lab in Mexico City that we work with, they have a pristine safety record over the last seven years. Their quality assurance standards are actually more stringent than what you see with the FDA. The umbilical cord stem cells in Mexico are allowed to be cultured. We don't need to use preservatives, so you end up with viability over 95%. These are very pure, potent cells that are below the fifth generation, meaning that they haven't been cultured and cultured and cultured and cultured like most international clinics where they're non-functional. So if someone tells you they're going to give you 50 million stem cells, and they're in you know, Panama or, or, or some international clinic that's not us, most likely they've been cultured so much that only about 10% or 20% of those are actually going to be functional, okay? With us, they're all functional, all right? Um, our company has been featured on all these different major networks. We uh, received numerous awards, 10 most innovative companies, 50 smartest companies of the year. Um, we have so many testimonials on our website. You're welcome to look at that, Stem Cell Treatment Clinic. Dot com. Give us a call to set up your free phone consultation at 888-988-0515. Our doctor will be happy to give you all the time you need, answer your questions, look at your case, look at any medical records that you can provide to us, um, and that, that doesn't cost you anything. All right. Our treatment starts at only $2,975 for 30 million stem cells. Most patients with neuropathy are going to require the 50 million, so that would only be an extra $1,000 at $3,975. We also do have programs where if you're going to come back several times during the year,